Hello and welcome back to a new video in my C, C++ tutorial series. In the last video we talked about strings and mainly what strings are. This video is kind of like an auxiliary video that kind of like follows the string basics and teaches you to deal with strings. So dealing with strings can be done in multiple ways, right? So there are mainly two ways. First way is you are completely dealing with the string in your own way. So basically you're taking a raw C string and you want to mangle it and edit it, copy it, modify it, parse it, whatever you want to do, you basically want to do it with that raw string. That's what we're going to do in this video. So in this video we're going to take a raw C string pointer and we're gonna work with it. In next video we're gonna get to the second part of this auxiliary videos about strings and we're basically gonna take an existing raw C string pointer and we're gonna use built-in functions of the programming language, so built-in functions that C offers ourselves, to basically work with them. Why I'm doing this this way around? Well, because uh, you're quite new to the concept of strings. So by t talking today about the raw string pointer and how to do use the raw string pointer to do whatever you want to do, um, we basically get a, a, a nice view on how strings work. We're going to revisit how strings work. And then in the next video, we can use some functions that are quite nice to use and easy to use, but are also a bit on a high level, on a more high level concept. All right, so let's get started by um, taking a raw string point and working with it. So what things do you want to potentially do with a string? So first of all, let me clean this maybe a bit down so that we're just left with the hello world. All right, so what are things that you might want to do with strings? Well, uh, there are multiple things. For example, a string is always something that a user can edit. So if you would imagine that a user basically inputs a string as a configuration. So for example, on Windows, it's quite common to have a INI configuration. INI configuration, we can take a look at this. I actually installed a proper browser now. And what we could do is we could search for INI file. So an INI file is, yeah, that's German, but I don't care. So an INI file is a configuration file for computer software that consists of text-based content with a structured and syntax comp uh, uh, comprising key value pairs for properties. So basically, it is a file that is just a, a text file that a human can read and it is a configuration for an application. So for example, if we take a look at this, this would be a, um, a INI file. So an INI file would look like this. For example, this, if it starts with a semicolon, it is kind of like a comment. If it has uh, some square brackets, it's basically defining a section. In this case, the section is called owner. So the owner is basically everything that follows below. For example, his name is John Doe and the organization is ACM Widgets Inc. Then down here we have a database, we get another comment here, use IP address in case network name resolution is not working, whatever. So basically just a comment that, that shows you as the user who edits this INI file or the super user editing the INI file, how to use it. And then for example, you can see the database has a server with the IP address 192.0.2.62. Uh, it has a port of 143 and it has a file uh, which is called payroll.dat. So kind of like you're connecting to that server and the payroll dot that is kind of like a database file. I don't care what this is really doing, this is basically just a format that we are using. If we scroll a bit down, you can basically see how this works. So keys are uh, a very stable feature. Basically, um, there are varying features that are different from implementation to implementation, but the like most stable thing that every INI file or every INI parser that is like dealing with that INI file can handle is basically here in these stable features. So for example, keys. Keys or called properties are very simple. We have a key, an equal sign, and a value, where we basically say, okay, this is the, the key, and this is the value. Uh, you can also see that uh, leading and training white spaces around the outside of the property name are ignored. So basically, if there is a white space here or here, this is all ignored. We have like, this is the name and this is the value. Now you can also see that we can have sections. Sections are like defined with these um, rectangular brackets and we can define a section like that. And then we then basically say, okay, key uh, one equals that and key two equals that. Comments can be done with a semicolon. Now, this is basically a quite simple format. And what we want to do is we want to parse it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that whole value in here and I'm going to paste this into my programming language. So let's start by pasting this uh, string inside of here. So I'm going to call this INI 
content and this is going to be equal to something. I'm just going to move this to the new line and then I'm just going to paste in the contents of that string. Now we just need to make sure that we escape the um, semicolons and you can see that it does not really support the new line. So what we basically need to do is we need to, to inline this so that we have it like on each line. So basically going to do this like that. I'm going to add a null terminator everywhere. This is going to take a bit of time. Might also want to do it like that so that it looks a bit better. So the name. Add this one here as well. The organization. Uh, no, of course, this needs to go inside of that. We have an empty line, which is also important that we can parse this if we would par write an INI parser. And no, I didn't want to do this like that. It should be a new line like that. Then we have another comment here with a new line. I mean, this is not how you would enter this. Normally you would load this from a file, but we haven't talked about files in C yet. We might do talk about them, I don't know. Let's see if I like talking about files, but at some point we might do. Um, and then I might show you how this works with files. But for now, we're just gonna do it very simple like that. And another new line in here and boom, we are done. We now have our INI file defined as a C string. As simple as that. If I would hover over this, it's actually not say showing this, but if I hover over that, it's showing it. Now I can print this by printing the INI content with the printf. I could use a percentage, where is my percentage sign? Come on, am I on the wrong keyboard layout? So you can print this with the $S here as well and add a new line here so that we are fine here. Or we actually have one there as well, so it's actually good. So if I would start this by pressing a five, we should get the exact INI content here down there. So basically what we see, it's the INI file here in the console. Just for us as debugging to see if we got strings right and we got it really. Now let's maybe add a bit of description here. So raw. INI file, backslash n, and make another new line so that we are nicely separated, so that we just get a little output. This is our raw INI file, and what I want to print after that is basically, yeah, maybe let's let's actually uh, spend another printf for that, and now I'm basically gonna say, um, first data. So raw INI file and parse data is the thing that we want to look at. Parsed data. Now, basically what we now want to do here is, of course, after the parse data, because now it's not going to do anything, we want to output everything that is configured in this INI file. So how can we do this? Well, basically what we need to do is we need to parse all of the contents of that file. And every time we kind of like uh, find a... Um, going to find a, uh, a section, a certain section, we want to basically make sure that we um, print it out. So if you find a section and the key and the value, we want to print this out. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to write a function for that parsing. So void parse ini. It's going to take a const char pointer content or ini data. I'm just going to call it ini data here. And we want to use that parse ini function to now parse that ini and print it. All right, so what is that parse INI going to do? Well, it needs to parse the INI file. How can we parse an INI file? Well, basically, we need to read in each character, and depending on the character, we need to decide what we want to do. All right, so how do we want to parse it? Well, we need to check each character individually. How can we check each character individual? Well, basically, we need to start at the first one and add at the last one. Can we do this? Of course we can do it. How can we do this? Well, now you would be tempted to do something like, let's maybe say, insert it to t i equals zero, and then you would do something like um, while dereferenced i and i data at i, as long as we don't have the null terminator. Um, as long as we have that, we basically want to uh, take a, like a start at this. Uh, no, we don't need to dereference it because we're already there, sorry. So i and i data at i, as long as that value is valid, we want to do something. Now, of course, we need to increment this as well down here, so we would have something like that. Now we know that we have for loops, so we would factor this out in a for loop and say i equals zero, i and i data at i 
and I++, so something like that. Then we have it nice and lined into a for loop, which is good. Now inside the for loop, we always want to take a look at one character, so we may need to extract this, let's call it C, and C is going to be equal to I and I data at position I, to basically read out the character and then work with it. Uh, this would be the most straightforward way of iterating through the whole string. If I would print this, for example, let's do a print f here, and I want to basically print a single character and a space. I could do this like that. And if I would now call the parse function, so parse i and i with the i and i content, if I would do this like that, we will, should get each character uh, in a single quote. So yeah, last modified 1st April 2001 by John Doe owner name John Doe. Basically you can see that our iterating over the um, actual data works. Uh, however, this is not how I want to do it. I don't want to do it because uh, there is a more easy way to do it and this is by using pointer arithmetics. So basically what we want to do instead of storing the i, I want to store another constructor pointer which is our cursor or I'm just going to call it for short c. And our cursor which is kind of like pointing to the current character being parsed is going to be set to i and i data. So basically what you're going to see, this is going to be a cursor called c and this cursor uh, starts at the first character of i and i data, so the address, same address as i and i data, and every time we iterate through our for loop, we want to kind of like move it one address further so that it points to the next character. So this basically means that we no longer can check if the data is um, null, the null terminator, like that. Now we need to dereference it to basically go back from the pointer to the actual value at that address and see that the address is not zero. Now instead of uh, incrementing i, we are now incrementing c. What happens if we increment c? Well, c is a pointer and it's a pointer of type char, so it's a pointer of a width uh, one byte, so basically the data the pointer is pointed to is one byte big. So if we are incrementing it, we are basically offsetting the pointer by one byte. If it would have a two byte type, then offsetting the pointer would offset it by two bytes. Basically by one array element, if you would call it call the pointer array again. Basically what this allows us, it allows us to get rid of that and it has a bit of an easier interface. Now we basically have the C, which is basically a pointer to the current character, now we can always use it by dereferencing it and say, all right, we want to dereference it at C and we want to check what's going on there. Now, if I would press a five, um, you can see that I made some mistake. Where is my mistake? Um, as you can see, it's not working. Uh, interesting. What is going on? Uh, C is a construct it's equal to i i data and as long as all right, of course we need to dereference C as well. If we dereference i and i data, it's not working because i and i data always stays at the first pointer, so we are incrementing C to infinity. But if I dereference it to uh, C itself, the pointer, cursor pointer, then you can see we are getting the same result that we got previously. So this is working now. Now, instead of printing it, we need to parse it. How can we parse it? Well, um, we need to write something that's called a state machine. What is a state machine? Well, basically a state machine is a machine that has several states. I do not want to go into the details of um, how this is done in theory. So basically the idea is on the state machine that you are parsing this uh, the string with a state. So how would we parse it? By default we are starting a kind of like a default state. The default state would be I am waiting for I and I data kind of like. Now it would try to parse the data. Now it basically finds the semicolon. The semicolon means a pointer. So the state machine would go into a state uh, uh, comment detected. So semicolon means comment and the state machine would would go into the state comment detected. Now this would basically mean that each character that's now following, because it's stateful, it's going to be ignored because a comment is uh, ignored. So it would basically read that line, no, I don't care about this, 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 because the, com the semicolon has started the comment. Now it finds this new line character. This new line basically marks end of the comment. Now basically what then the state machine does is it goes back into the state I am waiting for I and I data. So this kind of like puts it into the state, oh we have a pointer, but that one, that, uh, that new line there, is it's gonna put into a state done. The state, okay, comment done, ready for I and I data. Now we would basically increment to the next line here and it would see that we start with the opening bracket. The opening bracket basically means, all right, a section started. Now it would basically read all characters here and see, okay, O, W, N, E, R. Then it gets a 
closing squared bracket, which would basically put the uh, state machine into a state, all right, section detected, and it would kind of like store the current section. Now, after that, uh, it gets another new line, so it kind of like discards its state again. Now it comes to a, a new line. It is currently in the state waiting for INI data. It finds a normal character, so it kind of like goes into the state, okay, um, key detected. It reads that key. As soon as it defines a space or that equal sign, uh, it kind of like goes into the state, all right, key detection finished. It finds it equal. Um, it says, all right, ready for. Um, value data, it has a space, it's ignoring that, then it has value data started, it reads John Doe, it uh, finds the new line, and as soon as it finds the new line, it goes into value detection finished, and that's the point where we would basically flush this, and kind of like say, all right, we, we detected something. Now, this seems very, very theoretical. However, we are gonna do it now in a practical example and see how it's going. So first of all, we need a state. The state is just identified by an integer. I'm just gonna call it state and it starts at zero. Now I wanna add a bit of documentation so that we know what each state means. So basically what I wanna do is zero means, gonna do this like that. Um, boom, boom, boom. I want to write that, ready for INI data. Now what can occur is it basically can occur a comment. So comment, uh, comment started. So state one would mean comment started. Then we would have a state two. State two would basically mean um, section name started, where it's detecting the section name. We would have a state three, which would basically mean key uh, detected, key, or let's just also call it key started. Then we would have a, a value four, key finished. We would have a value five, um, ready for value. We would have a state six, value started. We would have a State seven? No, we would not have a state seven. These are all the states that we're gonna have in our state machine. So basically what I need to do is every time I have a character ready, I need to check where my state is. If I'm at state zero, I'm basically waiting for INI data. And now we basically depend on that single character. As soon as the single character C gets some special values, we might need to alter the state. So how are we gonna do this? Well, I'm gonna say if the reference character equals, for example, the uh, uh, semicolon. This would basically mean that we are now in the state of reading a comment. So comment started, and now I'm not going to do the brackets. I'm just going to say state equals one. So if we kind of like detect that that semicolon, we are now in state one. The comment has started, and now if we would go to the next character, we are no longer going inside of that if we would go into an else if. And the else if would be state equals one, which we're gonna write in a second. This is basically now reading comment. Now, what different things can happen during uh, parsing of the uh, of the ready for INI data? We could, for example, get this opening bracket. This opening bracket would mean that we are now inside of parsing a section name. So uh, basically, if the reference C would be equal to an open square bracket, our state would be equal to section name started and this is the same thing that we had previously here section name section name started instead of here so if the section name would be started we would be a state two and we would try to parse the section name now is there anything else that can happen well maybe let's uh do an else if here i mean the c shouldn't change but an else if is going to make this a bit more performant and just that it looks nice and we can do it like that and we have it like line by line so do we have anything else that can happen? Yes, we have different states that can happen. As soon as we get a alphanumerical character, so a number, a, um, a small character, a big character, some special characters, if we get anything else, we are basically inside of uh, the key started. How can we check this? Well, what is a valid character? A space is a valid character that does nothing, and a new line is a valid character that does nothing. So as soon as we are not getting a space or a new line. So new line and space, these are two valid characters. And if we don't get them, then we are now at 
key started. So at section state 3. State 3, do I have some too many brackets? Yeah, I have too many brackets. Idea is here, if we have a space or a new line, it's true, and then it's basically going to evaluate to false and we're not changing the state. However, if the character is not a space and not a new line, this is false, and it gets inverted to true, which basically means that we are now going into the state 3, which is our key started. So we would have another else if state equals 3. Is it 3 actually? Yeah, key started. Key started. And these are all things that can happen while we are waiting for INI data. Now what can happen if we are reading a comment? Well, a comment is completely ignored, so everything that we read in with a comment shall be also ignored. The only thing we care is the new line where we are done with the comment. So basically what we are doing here, we are checking if the reference C is a new line. So if we are on a new line, we are back at waiting for INI data, so we are setting our state back to zero, which means wait for INI data. So this is kind of like start comment, and this is end comment. Now, what is this, uh, the matter of section names? Well, a section name is only a valid section name if it is terminated with a closing bracket. So we have basically two things that we need to check. We need to basically check uh, if we are equal to a closing bracket. If we are that, we're going to have some code here later on, which basically means end section name. While this above here means start section name. What happens if the user would forget the section name closing bracket, like would forget that one? Well, we would at some point get a new line and have therefore an invalid section name. So we would have another case, else if the reference C equals new line, which is basically meaning invalid section name, discard. And we're basically just going to discard the section name here. We're not going to get any error reporting in here, we're just going to discard it. And we discard it by going back to our state zero. We do the same thing here as well, actually. We at the, most of the times go into the state zero because we are basically discarding it here. But one thing that we do here is, is to do save section name. I'm going to get to how we do this in a second. Now, um, as you can see, this is now looking good. We just need a way to basically save the section name. We're going to do all the saving in a second. Uh, or actually, let's do it just now. How do we want to save this? Well, basically, what we're going to have is inside of this function, we're going to have a char array. I'm just going to call it buffer. And this buffer is going to have 265 characters. And the first character in the buffer is going to be set to the null terminator by beginning. So that we kind of like have an empty string here. And what we basically want to do is, every time um, we read something valid, so for example, when we are reading the section name, we would need an else here if we read any valid character inside of the section name. Uh, I basically want to write that valid character to that buffer so that we can, if, like, can remember what the valid name was. So how can we write this to a buffer? Well, we could write this very uh, simply, but I do want to write a license function for that. I want to basically say, append buffer and uh, append buffer is going to get a few things it's going to get a, a char pointer buffer and it's going to get a char c and we're going to write a safe little unsafe function that appends to that buffer how are we going to do this um let's copy this over down here maybe no actually not the parts i and i is the more interesting thing of today's video so let's Put it somewhere down here and let's append to the buffer. So how are we appending to the buffer? It's going to be quite simple. We're going to have again a cursor, but now I'm going to make this cursor out of that. So we're going to have a char pointer c equals buffer, or maybe just do it like that. So for uh, c equals buffer, the reference c c plus plus, which is not c plus plus yet, but you get the point. Uh, D reference C, what is your issue with that? Uh, should be actually good. Why are you yelling at me? All oh, right, because okay, the cursor. Okay, so cur we just need to uh, write cursor here because C is already used above there. Uh, so I basically gonna do this like this. So for 
cursor equals buffer, dereference curver, so, so as long as this is valid, we're going to say cursor plus plus. Uh, we don't have any body inside of that for loop, so instead of just leaving this empty and doing nothing, you can actually do a semicolon to indicate a language that it shall do the for loop, but it should not have any body inside of the for loop. Now, when we are basically done with that code, our cursor is currently at the null terminator. So the, what we are actually doing is we're going to set cursor at, let's maybe do this with the array operator, so the current position of the cursor is going to be set to uh, C, and the next element in the cursor is going to be set to the null terminator so that we make sure that the null terminator is kept. So, with the cursor here, not assigned to anything, we assign it to the buffer, we move it forward until we find the null terminator. Now the null terminator is at the current position, at the index of zero, we're going to write in the current character that we want to append. And then uh, at the next position, I'm going to write the backslash zero, which is the null terminator, so that we assert that this null terminator is set again. Now what we basically can use here in the else, so if we get the end of the section name, we need to kind of like store it from that buffer. I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, if we get a new line, we basically need to clear the buffer. How can we clear the buffer? Well, I'm going to do this very simply. Uh, buffer at index zero or just the reference buffer equals backslash zero, which basically puts the zero terminate at the beginning of the buffer, which basically means that the section name that was in there is not valid. So uh, we are back at an empty buffer and we can append new to that. Now instead of the else style, if we don't uh, find a end of valid end or an invalid end, we basically want to append all characters in between. I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to take the buffer and append to this. So I'm going to call the append buffer function, input the buffer and the current character, which is the reference C. And what this does is it's basically appending the current value to that buffer. Now, how do we going to store the current section? Well, we're going to store it in another buffer, so I'm going to set, create a new uh, array here, so this is kind of like our working buffer. Then we have a current section, and this current section is also going to be a, a char array. Let's just call it current section, and the size is also going to be 265. And the only thing that we're going to do at the current section here is we're going to do a mem copy. I don't think that we have the header included. Uh, SCD dlib, no we don't have it, string.h. Now we can use the mem copy, the destination is gonna be the uh, current section, the source is gonna be the uh, buffer, and the size is gonna be 265 times size of char, because we are copying charts. And this is now basically copying the whole buffer to the current section, but we really just cared onto the first null terminator. In the future, actually next video, we're gonna get to a proper function that does proper string copying. Mem copy always gonna copy a fixed size. We do have a function that can copy dynamically depending on how big the string is, or not how big the string is, but basically how long the buffer string is until it finds a null terminator, but that's like the topic of next video. So basically what we wanna do is just gonna mem copy to that here. All right, so this is now basically saving us the current section. Now, what we basically need to do is we need to do the same thing for the key. Now, uh, on the section, I am putting a few constraints in there. So basically, the section, if I write a space in here, the space is going to be kept because it's like inside of these brackets. And if you're doing a space inside of the bracket, it's probably fine. However, here is uh, on the name, you have seen that the standard says that a space in front of here should be discarded. So that you can do like something like that, right? You want to have maybe some spaces here so that you can nicely organize this here and have this like um, formatted so that you can see all oh, right this is kind of like related to that section so that each space here needs to be uh, discarded here and not taken into account this also actually means that um, we might want to also check for tabulators. So tabulators, if the user is using a normal text editor, tabulators are going to screw you up as well as here. It's going to take the tabulator as a name. So if you want to be 100% safe, you also want to take a look for tabs here. So tabs is also something that is valid here to separate them. There are uh, systems and programming languages and applications that really don't like tabs that are screwing you up with tabs. But if you want to write it solid, you want to check for the tab here actually. So we get a space or a top or a new line, we really don't care. But as soon as we're getting a character like this N form name, we want to go into it. Now, uh, there's one important thing. 
if you're just setting the state to three here, you're gonna go into an issue. But I'm gonna keep this up for now. You can take a look at this and maybe see what the issue is. As soon as we're getting the character and we go to state three. I'm gonna keep this as is and I'm gonna show you the error in a second. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to now the line here where the key has been started. Now the key is started basically by finding the first character. And as soon as we first get a space, we basically wanna say, all right, the key is finished. So as soon as we have a space, key is finished and done. So what we wanna do is we wanna check the reference C equals a space, or we are also always taking a look at tabulators now. So let's add them in this here as well. So if we are finding a space or a tabulator, the key is finished. And we're gonna go to the state four, which I think is, I can actually have over that to see it. Um, key finished, yeah, that's right. So key started and this is basically key finished or end key, something like that. It's like end key. And above here we have like start key and down here we have end key. Now, uh, of course you need to do some copying here as well. So we might do this as well here or there. So in addition to the current section, let's maybe call this current value. So we're gonna have a current section. We're gonna have a current key. And we're gonna have a current value that we're gonna use later on. So we want to store the current key as well, which we're going to, of course, again, then also do with the buffer. We're going to re reuse it for that. So I'm going to steal that mem copy above here. And instead of copying to the current section, I'm going to copy to the current key. Now, if we get anything else of that, uh, we want to basically store it. So everything else is going to be appended to that buffer. Only one thing is in between. If we are getting a new line so that we are basically having defined the key but no value for it or no assigning or not stop the key we are getting a basic new line the key is invalid and we basically want to go back to the state zero and say right we got a new line back to zero this is not what we expected all right so kind of like uh, invalid invalid key value pair something like that now, um, state four means end key and everything else is going to be appended. This is actually everything that we need. Now we just need to implement the state four as well, which is now end of key. So uh, else if state equals four, we want to say that the key has been finished. So end of key. What can happen if we have an end of key? Well, we can get a uh, equals. And if we are getting an equals, we basically um, mean that we are now ready for the uh, value here. So if we are getting this to zero, we're going to set state equals to five, which is um, ready for value here. We can have also different outcomes. We can have a new line. If we have a new line, we again have an invalid key value pair and go back to state zero. So invalid key value pair. Do we need to do anything else? No, because everything else that's in between, which is not a new line or an equal, basically means we have some spaces in between. Uh, actually not. We might want to check spaces are okay. So we might want to check that there are no other characters coming after that. So we might do a quick uh, else if not c equals space or c equals tab. So if we don't have a tabulator or a space, we also go back to zero because it's an invalid key value pair. Now, actually, this would mean, actually, this would require another state here because we would need to wait for a new line until the, let's maybe call this here invalid data, let's call it state seven, invalid data and invalid data shall wait until a new line. Do we have anything as invalid section name? So we discarded, this was discarding on a new line, invalid key value pair was also on a new line, which is okay. However, this is now not on a new line, so we need to go to state seven to wait to the next new line here. If we wouldn't wait for that, you could do something like file equals or file lol xd equals. So basically, if you would do something like that, it would basically detect this L, go into an invalid state, would detect this O, and the value would be OL equals payroll dot. But we don't want to do this, so we want to make sure that we wait for that new line, of course, to correctly finish this up. So we have this else if here to go to state seven, if, seven, if we have anything that's, that's not valid in here. All right, so now we are done with that. Now we have start 
Start of key. Uh, so we have an else if state equals five. And now we need to check in multiple things. So first of all, um, I basically want to check if we get a new line. If we get a new line again, we have an invalid key value pair. The state is going to get to zero again. So invalid key value pair like that. Uh, we do have more conditions. So if we are not on a space or on a um, tabulator, we want to start with that. So not space and not tabulator. So none of these. Uh, or you can see the logic here. So we could actually put a logic around, but it's basically not one of these two. two. If they are not these two, then the, the key has begun. So we're going to go to state six and six and say, begin key. Uh, start off, or this is actually not start off, I'm an idiot. This is actually ready for value. Five. Ready for value is five. Ready for value, and then now... If I'm on state six, it's start, start of value, begin of not key, value. There we go. So else if the state is equal to six, we are now basically reading in data. Now this can be terminated with uh, a with a new line. So if we are getting a new line here, the state is going to get to zero, and the key needs to be stored here. State equals zero, and I'm going to say. Uh, copy again because now we need to copy over again. So I need to steal my mem copy here. And now current key. I'm going to write this now to current value from the buffer. And one thing that I have forgotten everywhere here is to also set the buffer back to the null terminator so that we can start fresh. And then we are basically going to do this like there as well. So we're going to start fresh and we go back to state zero. So what can happen as well? So um, we actually just care about the, the new line. So the new line is going to be the only thing that ends this. Everything else is going to be appended. So we're going to call append buffer on anything else. We're going to append to the buffer. Uh, buffer or character. So that's everything we do. So if we are on the start of the value, we are kind of like appending to the buffer. And we're going to go out of that. Now the only thing left to do here is, uh, of course, reporting that. So basically here we have a to-do report uh, key value. And I'm basically going to do this with a printf. So report out. I'm going to do this with a printf. Printf. So I just want to show this like that section uh, slash key. And then I want to have the value in here. So we're going to have the, of course, a new line. And let's me say this. Let's maybe call this property, property, and then I maybe add some, some maybe again a few brackets around there, and I'm um, gonna tell it to have the current section, current key, current value to basically report these values out, and then I go back to state null and continue on reading new data in. All right, so now we just need to write the uh, state seven. State seven is basically just gonna wait until a new line. So if the reference equals to be a null line, we're just gonna go back to state zero and say, right, we are ready again for data. Now, I think we should have everything sorted out. We do have a bug in there as code, but I'm going to show this to you, to you in a second. So we do not really hesitate around. We're just going to press a five and see what it does, if we have any error in here and what it does. Well, you can see that it's kind of working, actually. So let's take a look at this. So you can see that the section gets recognized. So section owner, that was good. but. Uh, owner name was not correct. So owner name was not okay. And also here organization was okay. So we are getting the owner again. We are getting owner aim. What is owner aim? On though. So we are kind of like having two issues here. First of all, I can see that we are always missing the first character at the values as well as the key. So it's, 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 it's aim, but it should be name. It's aim, but it should be name. It's also organization, and it should be organization. It should be database uh, server, uh, but it is uh, the error. Error, it should be port, it's ort, it should be file, it's isle, it should be... Um, 
quotation mark payroll, but it is no quotation mark payroll. It should be 143, it is 43. So we are always missing the first character. And additionally, every time we are going into the section the first time, we are kind of like having the name of the section in here. So we have two bugs in here. First of all, the section name is kind of like not deleted properly when we detect the section. And we are always missing the first character of the key and the value. So kind of like three bugs, but two of them are the same. So let's maybe try first finding when we have finished the section. Section name started. So what are we doing here? Invalid section name. Okay, end of section name. You can see at end of section name, we also forgot to clear the uh, buffer, the first character of the buffer to the zero terminator. If we're adding this, this should get rid of the first issue. Okay, now you can see we have the first issue solved. The section name is not displayed here on the first value of a section. So now we just have aim, ondo, recognition, over, odd, IL. Like we now just miss the first character in every key and value. Now, why are we missing them? Well, basically because there's an issue. You can basically see we are waiting for INI data. And as soon as we are getting the first uh, character, we are setting the state to three. However, the first character already needs to be stored in our buffer. So if we're just setting it to three here, we are kind of like missing the first character because the next iteration is going to increment C. So we are kind of like losing the first character. So basically what we need to do here is, uh, now it's formatting this a bit bad. So maybe let's format this in so this is like more accepted in terms of how I do this. Uh, so basically what we want to do, do here is we want to call a pen buffer here as well with the character so that the first character that already belongs to the uh, to the name of that key is stored here as well. And we have the same bug of course in the value. So we are basically uh, end of key, we are ready for value, and here we have the begin of the value, so basically we are missing um, the same append here as well. So basically what we want to do is append here, begin the value, and close this up here as well. And if I would run this now again you can see that we are now getting everything as expected. We are having the raw INI content, last modified, owner, name, organizations, everything in here. And you can see that the property here is extracted correctly. The owner name is John Doe, the owner organization is ACM Widgets Inc. The database server is 192.0.2.62. The database port is 143 and the database file is, uh, is quotation mark payroll dot and everything gets read it incorrectly. Now, of course, this is not really useful. What you really would want to do is, instead of printing this out, is reporting it to something. And actually, this is the most easy thing how you can write a parser in C. So if you want to have a small, easy to understand and fast parser, this is the way to go. This is how you would implement this. Um, there is a way around these else if and these stuff, which we're going to talk about in the future, and we're going to get to this, of course, this is called switch case, which is going to make the syntax a bit less noisy here, but we're going to talk about this in, a, in, in maybe the next video, I think. Um, not the next video, because the next video is about strings, but we're going to talk about this in the future video, how we can make this code even smaller. But as you can see, like, this is quite simple. I mean, it's quite long, it's like a bit of a hundred lines, but on the other hand, parsing INI files can be done in just 100 lines. Right? You can see it's very simple. There are many of some comments in here. You could structure this even tighter. And you can like see that parsing a string to a format that you want to kind of like detect is as easy as that. Um, and this is actually the way if you want to write it robust. You can see like we had this like we, we can really depend on everything. If we got some invalid format, we can detect this. Of course, we do have some design flaws in here. For example, normally the last one here where we are printing that out before that copy, we would need to fix something up. Actually, if I would, for example, add a new line in here, which might be, so for example, somebody might add a new line in here. And you can see that this new line is reflected here as well. So to make this parser even more robust, you would have something like um, uh, stripe buffer, which is going to stripe off uh, white spaces at the end of the buffer. So if I would add the stripe buffer function, we could make this even more robust. So what I would do is something like that. I would start here and then I would write like, like a while loop while dereference cursor equals uh, space or dereference cursor uh, equals tabulator. I would do something like cursor dereference cursor equals 
null terminator so i would basically insert a null terminator there uh to assert this one thing that i might want to do here is uh, actually not check for the reference cursor. I would like check for cursor at, oh sorry, that was not what I wanted. Would check for cursor at position one. This would basically look one ahead and uh, would basically end up on the last character. So this is basically the one ahead solution. So one element further, not equals null terminator. I could add this in here to be a bit more precise what I'm doing. So current position of the cursor, but by looking one ahead, so as soon as one ahead is the null terminator, I'm gonna stop iterating and go to that one and then I can check if it's space or tabulator. And if it's the case, I'm just gonna set this to the null terminator and I'm gonna do cursor minus minus, which is decrementing the cursor. So it's kind of like going back to the array again. So we are having an initial cursor. It starts at the beginning of that array. It moves forward until it finds the first character that is not the null terminator. And then it moves back and clears everything the null terminator until it finds something that's not a space or a tabulator. If I would add this function, it of course does nothing. Ha ha ha. I of course need to call it as well. So before I copy the current value, I would like call something like stripe buffer. And I would stripe buffer to my um, buffer, of course. And of course, if I have the stripe function now, I could write uh, some stuff above there also a bit more more cleaner without like having more states. But if I would write this like that, it still kept that now. It still kept that white space there. Okay, so this is bad. Uh, what didn't went right here? Let's try to debug this. All right, so let's take a look at this. So the cursor equals, oh, okay, not equals null terminator, of course. Not equals null terminator. This should now move me to the last character, which is the E in John Doe. Yeah, that's correct. If I would continue this, ACM, we got the dot. Now we got the space, and if we are getting the space um, and go to that breakpoint here, you can see now it's striped away the space, yeah. Um, actually, it's already striped away in the while loop, but yeah. Uh, if I would do this like that now and take a look at the output, come on you would now see that now the white space has been striped. So you can see um, working with strings, very, very easy. You just need to get around the concept that a string is an array of characters. And that's the most important observation. It's, in the, it's an array of characters. And if you're using the pointers correctly, like taking it as a starting pointer, starts at the initial address of that array, so the address of the first character. And as long as the dereference current address, which is the value, is not an null terminator, we're going to increment that address, which moves it to the next element of the array or to the next character. So basically, this is the most important observation of the video. And then you can do just something like the state machine, which has multiple states on how you want to parse something, and you are done. So we have written an INI parser and explained how it works in like 50 minutes. As simple as that. 50 minutes, you now know how to write an INI parser. And actually, Parsing INIs is probably not that useful because parsing INIs, there are many libraries out there that can do it. There are libraries out there where you basically just have to call like something like give me INI, then you're gonna give it the content and you give it a function. We're gonna talk about function pointers as well, but function pointer basically is a pointer to a function. I don't wanna call it, talk about this. And then you would have something like your own function void uh, INI data. Or how did I call this? Uh, I just called it function. You would have a function, and this function would then take a const const char pointer section, const char pointer key, const char pointer value, and you would be good. This is how simple things would work out if you would do this in real life. Uh, now, one thing that I do see, I do see a big issue in my code, actually. The current section, if we don't get any section, this is uh, a bit bad. This will fail, but if I would add this, no section would be fine as well, which will just get an empty string. Well, we just need to make sure to initialize this. So, yeah, that's how you write an INI parser. Is it parser fast? Let's measure this. That's not a correct measurement, by the way, but... It should get us close. And if I would now click on continue, nine milliseconds. So the INI file was parsed in nine milliseconds. And we can actually make this faster if we switch this to release. I already told you, release is always going to be faster than debug. And if I would run this on release, you can see it's taking five milliseconds. And we can make this even more faster by removing the printf. If I would remove the printf here, it's not gonna allow me that breakpoint here even. Let's retry this. 
I mean, this is now also adding another printf, but you can see like it goes down to just one millisecond. And even so, this is not the correct measurement. So if you are like striping away printing, which is which you should not do really on a correct INI parser, you can like see like one millisecond INI file parsed. And actually the parser that I've written is quite bad because it's always copying the full array and stuff like that. So these mem copies are actually bad. We're gonna talk in the next video about the function that makes this even, would make this code even faster by having a special functions and I think we're gonna abuse this example like maybe the next two videos or so to basically uh, yeah get our code a bit sorted out and nicer but let's put a printf back in here because we like it and that's it guys for today your own INI parser and you can use that concept and apply it to your own data formats because INI everybody has a parser there but if you have your own file format your own configuration format everything you can like define a simple parser like that, I already did this, and parsed my own things with these state machines, and it's, it's, it's great, you can do everything that you want to do, and it's amazing. So, thank you for watching, see you in the uh, next video, make sure to like and subscribe, and have a nice day, bye!